Hey, Sean here from speedcubeview.com. I am in a lot of Facebook groups, admin a few Facebook groups, and if anyone writes me directly, I always help them out. I've written really long messages going through in detail someone's solve, and a lot of times i found just making a video is the easiest instead of typing a bunch of stuff out. So I'm going to do that right now because I find I'm writing a lot of the same things. So this is going to be a video on how to be sub one minute or sub 30 or sub 20. These are just the main things you have to do. I think people who have a separate video on how to be sub 40, how to be sub 30, how to be, those are just waste of time. They're all basically the same content and you should really work, be working on the same thing and know what you need to do to get six second solves and just start working on that. We're gonna go through that now. And one tip that's gonna be really important throughout all of this, stop worrying about your times. Your times will get better through years of practice. They will get better little by little. And if you're doing something new, that's going to slow you down. Stop worrying about what your times are and don't think that you can get to a world record time within weeks. It takes years. So stop it. First main tip has to do with the cross and F2L and that there is no main thing called advanced F2L or advanced cross. That's not an actual thing. Videos that say that are just talking about things you should know. And if someone says this is called advanced cross or advanced F2L, they're wrong. There are things that people have said like algorithms are advanced F2L. However, they're actually usually worse and intuitive is what you want to do. The way I'm going to have this video go is I'm going to just do a few solves and I'm going to put the scramble on the screen. They're going to be scrambles I've never seen before. So we'll be walking through them together and you'll see the steps you need to do. And now with all this said, the other big thing you need to know is that efficiency is key. CFOP should be around 60 moves. Rue can be under 50 moves. And that's your first goal. Be efficient, not speed, efficiency. Okay, enough talking. Let's talk about this scramble. I suggest everyone learn how to be color neutral, whether you are going to do that for all of your solves or like what I'm doing now, just focusing more on white, but being color neutral when there's a really good cross or F2L or whatever. But I'll do white cross for this. Major tip. Yeah, red's actually, red cross is looking pretty nice. One major tip is plan out your entire cross from inspection. I remember when I started, I did two cross pieces and then I got to three and then I got to four. That can work, but your goal is to do all of it. If your inspection takes longer than 15 seconds, cool, that's fine. 30 seconds inspection, great. Two minutes, that's even better. If you can plan out the entire cross, try planning it out a different way or see if you can execute it from a different side. One of the best tips I learned when I was playing disc golf is find three different approaches. If you know a way you can throw that disc, and if you don't know what disc golf is, that's a picture. If you know, okay, I, I can throw uh, Anheuser backhand to the basket that way, find two more ways of doing it. And then that will just at least open up options. So you can do that here. We're just gonna find one for time. And so solving the cross, let's see here. This is, actually this is not too bad. So what I might do is something like this. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That works all fairly straightforward here. And now we actually don't have a lot of great options right away for F2L. For F2L, it's almost all four to five move setup, three move insert. Sometimes the setup is a little bit more. So for example, here, there's a few ways I could do this. I could just do a sledgehammer, which will move that corner to here. But what I'm gonna do is this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Little excessive moves, but it sets it up here with only doing R and U moves. And then three move insert. Red and green's first thing that popped up, although that blue and red's a little bit nicer. So one, two, three, four, set up. Three move insert. Red and green, I'm gonna rotate. U, R, U2, R prime, four moves with that rotation, and then three move insert. Could have done a wide D move there, but rotations seem to be a little bit nicer at times. Here, we can set it up, one, two, three, four, insert. Now, if this is still going a bit fast to follow, 
that's fine. It's not about following this exact scramble, but just saying there's not a ton of algorithms it's setting up, and that setting up is what takes time because you start learning, oh, when I see that, your hands know what to do instead of just trying to plan each one out. The problem is there's hundreds of variations of those kinds of things. So if you do algorithms, it, it starts to limit how you think about it. Then from here, it's knowing OLL. Now, I sometimes do some weird OLLs. However, I like them. And then PLL. I have videos on OLL and PLL. I'm going to make one in the future where I go through every single one and how I feel like you should approach it, just like I did with CMLL for Roo. Okay, we have one scramble down. So as you saw, it was intuitive cross, intuitive F2L, nothing super fancy, just set up an insert, OLL and PLL. Let's find another scramble. This is the next one that shows up. I'll take a screenshot of it. Okay, so we have, let's do white cross. Hmm, interesting. Okay, this is an interesting one. I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Blue and orange stands out to me. I'm gonna set it up. So one, two, three, four. It goes right into inserting. Then we've got, ah, this is a fun one. Blue and red I see is back here. So we can do one, there's a few ways you can do this. One, two, three, four, and then insert. One tip is that you can set things up, insert, and then undo that setup. So for example, one, two, an F move that's rare to do, three, four, five, like that. And then orange and green, one, two, three, four, set up, three move insert. And then here I'm gonna rotate, set up green and red, one, two, three, four, and insert. Then we have OLL, and this one from practice I know is going to solve the corners. And then another Z perm, two in a row. And one more scramble. So before I finish this off, that is it. That is all you really need to do to have world record times. As you go through the years of seeing thousands upon thousands of solves, that F2L gets faster. There's interesting cases you can do, but sometimes doing the weird versions, like that one I showed with the F move, might turn out to be slower in the end because you're doing some weird finger tricks. OLL and PLL, I mentioned that I do some odd ones and I'm sure there'll be someone in the comment section who without seeing this part of the video is going to yell at me about that one. Two things about that. First off, people use different algorithms. People will say you shouldn't do wide move G perms and Felix will often do wide move G perms, but also as you progress, you can learn alternate PLLs, alternate OLLs, and I've changed algorithms very often. In my opinion, it's better to learn ones that you can pick up quickly and understand and adjust them later. It helps you understand how they work, and I find it more enjoyable to get going and then adjust some of the algorithms as I went along. Even the top solvers who maybe learned one algorithm have probably changed a lot of them. So it's not a beginner thing to do. Okay, final one. Let's see if this all works out the same. Orange cross is amazing. This is why you should be color neutral. Look at that. Three pieces there and a pair there. I could easily just do one, two, three, four, and then insert that pair. This is why you be color neutral. Okay, but we're gonna do white cross. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five. Now I saw that uh, blue and red back here, but we have green and red, so I'm just gonna rotate, pair up, and a tip for F2L, insert in the back when possible. That way you can see things more clearly. It makes it much nicer. Blue and orange, I can see that very nice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a little bit longer setup, and then insert. And then we have, here's one where you could do kind of a weird thing with a setup and insert. Instead of doing this, I just set up, insert, undo that move. And then we have our final blue and red. So I'll do one, two, three, four, rotate. And then here actually, normally I would just insert, but I can see this is gonna give me something really nice. So I'm gonna do a sledgehammer and solve that. Sledgehammer from the back. 
And then I just talk about G perms. Here's a G perm. This is one that I've changed. Uh, sometimes I do wide moves. Sometimes I do U and D moves, and it depends on how my grip is at the moment and just how it's flowing. But I will still do on the left side. It just works well for me. There are a couple things that I didn't show in here, which would be like keyhole actually. You know what? We've got a full video here. Let's do one more scramble and I'm gonna make sure I force a keyhole in here. But this is it. This is all you need to do to be under a minute, under 30 seconds, under 20 seconds, under 10 seconds. This is it. It's what I would consider basic intuitive cross, basic intuitive F2L, OLL, and PLL. It almost, I think the problem is it sounds too simple for people. It sounds too simple and they think that I'm lying to them. They think that I'm holding back something. Or they think that because it's simple, it can't be right and it needs to be something complicated. That is it. The key element to all of this is years of practice. Far too often people say they're stuck at 30 seconds or stuck at 20 seconds. You're not stuck, you need practice. Focus on efficiency. Last one, I'm gonna force a keyhole in here because that can work really well. Okay, so again, white cross. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here, let's do green and red. Again, this is one that I like to do that has a little extra moves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we could rotate or just do a YD and insert that. But it's setup, insert. Blue and orange, too easy to do anything else. Setup, insert. So here, there's a lot of different ways of inserting that pair back here. This is one where it's kind of a cool trick. We can do something along the lines of one, two, three, four, five. And now we kind of messed up because you can't do keyhole on the final pair. Okay, so we'll Okay, I will do it this time. And like I said earlier in the video, this isn't so much about just following these exact solves. You might say, you know, it goes by too fast, which if you've commented that and you haven't watched this point, there you go. And the idea though is just to see the concepts, which there we go with concepts again. Okay, so here we go. We've got quite a few options. Let's do, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and well, I could do blue and red, one, two, three, set up, insert. Green and red, insert. Okay, have to do keyhole here or else I'm just gonna miss it again. And, nope, sledgehammer, insert. I wanted a keyhole so much, but other things are just too easy to set up and insert and get an OLL skip. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna end this here. If you were looking for a list of learn this, learn this, learn this, learn this, that's not what you need. If someone does that, they're making it way too hard on you. I don't think they're lying to you, but they're making it way too hard on you. And you know what? There is one thing that I didn't talk about here, which maybe it would be obvious what you need to do is learn to be efficient. Step one. Then after that, you'll get faster in time. And intuitive F2L is often more efficient than algorithms. And you know what, there was one thing I didn't talk about, which was Rue. I could also talk about ZZ or Petrus, but it's the same thing with any method. Learn to be efficient first. So if I'm doing Rue and I want to create the blocks, let's see here, one, two, three, four, then five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And being efficient with Rue takes practice. Now someone who's a lot more proficient would say there's some other things I could do to save moves. However, 14, 15, 16, 17, I'll keep on going. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. First two blocks are done in 25. Then we have CMLL, 25, 26, 27, 28, 
26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. And then we have edges, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 44, and 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. 50 moves. <laughs> when you learn to do a cube efficiently like that, there's not really much else to learn besides little things here or there to cut down on maybe some excessiveness or keeping your hands in a nicer spot. I'm a little bit rambling here and this wasn't a scripted video, but I've made so many individual videos for people and they're almost all the exact same thing. And I want you to know if you're starting out or if you have cubed for years, there's some very simple things you need to do and then you're ready to go. And you can become a sub 20, sub 15, sub 10 solver. Thank you very much for watching. Leave your thoughts and questions in the comment section below. Hit like, subscribe for more content like this in the future. And as always, stop by speedcview.com for more news and reviews.